Okay, hi. Uh, so um, I want to talk about LTI deep linking, which used to be until a couple of months ago called content item. Um, some marketing changes, apparently. Um, I don't know if you remember from last year, but um, Dr. Chuck, in his keynote, uh, a very engaging keynote, uh, talked about uh, content item uh, LTI tools and how we should have them in Opencast. Um, and I think uh, Stephen um, put in a bug in Jira at, at, as um, he was talking. <coughs> so um, coincidentally, a, co uh, a month before that, I'd also been to a Blackboard conference um, where the, one of the co-writers of the spec had been pushing um, content item as well. Uh, and it seemed to be a sensible thing to do, so I thought I'd give it a try. A uh, quick overview of our various integrations at Kiel with uh, Opencast. Um, we've got two timetabling systems, Syllabus Plus and CellCat. Um, then there's some magic that happens, and um, the schedules get imported into Opencast uh, from the user point of view. <clears throat> they log into Blackboard, uh, which is our LMS, uh, via Shibboleth. Um, and from uh, we embed Opencast series in um, Blackboard using the LTI series tool. Uh, and then um, Opencast also grabs the permissions and roles from Blackboard using a um, user directory uh, provider based on um, Cape Town's Sakai version. <coughs> so uh, LTI. That's what um, IMS Global say LTI is. Um, it basically allows you to um, integrate uh, a tool. Uh, it sends the username, uh, the uh, context, uh, which is generally the course or module um, ID, and various other um, stuff across to the tool. Um, and it's signed so that it can be trusted. Um, so Opencast knows that once, uh, you know, if, if uh, Blackboard has told you that uh, a particular user is logged in, then it definitely is that user. So you can then treat it um, as uh, authorized. Um, and of course, we, we enrich that with the um, user provider. So Opencast has some basic LTI tools already. Um, we're currently using the series tool, as I say. Um, so basically, that just means that we have a link um, on the left-hand side of our course called Playback, which is how we brand um, Opencast at Kiel. And that just gives you a list of the current um, of the recordings from the current series. We also use LTI to authenticate um, lecturers into the uh, admin UI. Um, where they can edit and see a list of their recordings and things as well, be able to delete them. Uh, this is great, um, but we have some uh, other requirements. Some of our teaching is shared amongst uh, several modules, um, which causes a confusion. We, we automatically insert the playback link, um, but um, uh, that links to the series with the same module code as the module that the Blackboard uh, course is in. And if, we've, if we have shared teaching, um, obviously we need several courses to link to the same module. And that's a bit complicated. We also like to be able to embed um, uh, Opencast content elsewhere, um, so within text editors and things like uh, we were just talking about. So uh, that's where deep linking comes in, or content item. Um, so basically, the idea of deep linking is that uh, when you add your uh, tool in your LMS, instead of just adding it without any configuration, um, it basically allows you to open a, um, a page in the tool, so in Opencast, um, which you can then choose your um, 
uh, choose the content, do anything you like, basically. And then um, at the end of that, you, um, the tool will submit back to um, the, L the LMS a list of content that should be added into the um, course. And that can be um, an LTI link itself. Um, so uh, it ba will basically create an LTI link <laughs> that will um, link directly to something in OpenCast. Or it can even be um, a file um, or a batch of HTML, um, anything basically. And some LMSs allow you to even <coughs> send back multiple things, um, which is uh, defined in the spec. So yeah, um, the idea is to give more control to lecturers as to how their content appears in the LMS and share recordings across modules is the uh, biggest use case for us um, and to be able to embed specific videos and also uh, upload content directly into OpenCast. Uh, so adding um, content item support uh, was pretty easy. That's the only extra code that was required in OpenCast. <laughs> Um, basically, what it does is um, allow oops, because the uh, LTI tools are all static um, HTML and JavaScript. If we just scroll down to the to the content and the specification here, uh, all we have to do is um, return this JSON. Uh, which describes the content that you want to be inserted into the LMS. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, we can just pop up this uh, um, dialog. So this is a this is a tool which allows you to choose which series is embedded rather than just embed the series that uh, you've come from. Um, so uh, it gives you a list of all the series that your user has permission to um, see. Uh, you can choose which one it is. Um, the embed uh, thing there is with what style of embedding. Um, oops. Uh, so the uh, drop down there allows you to choose between the various options that the LMS allows, um, including putting things in an iframe, an embed, um, a uh, window like that, or as a separate page. Um, and uh, this, this is the title of the link that is sent back. So when you then select that, it will add an LTI link, um, which links to the specific module that you've requested. Uh, yeah, so the tools are just, um, as they're just static HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, it means you can basically add any um, UI to choose um, uh, what you want and to, um, all you have to do is add that um, uh, JSON in the in a form, submit it back to OpenCast, and then that will push it back into the, uh, into the LMS. If you're playing around with this stuff, um, LTI.tools is really useful. It has a great um, uh, emulator for both tool provider and tool consumer. Um, so it's very easy to test to make sure that what you're doing is that actually makes sense and works and, and meets the specification. So um, there's a few issues. Um, the official LTI Java library doesn't support content item responses. Uh, basically, you need to sign um, the responses in a, very similar to the um, one-legged OAuth um, stuff at the moment, although there are some new ways of doing that as well. So I had to uh, end up copying some code in and um, changing it slightly rather than just using the official library. Um, I since found out there isn't actually an official library and someone just called it IMS Global and it's not actually part, it's not official and that's why I can't get those changes upstream or anything. Um, it's not been tested in other VLEs yet, so I've only tested it in Blackboard. Um, seems to work, uh, although actually I've just heard from um, Paul Gration of Sussex that he's tried it in Canvas and that does work, although the configuration's a bit tricky. Um, the LTI standard seems to be implemented very differently um, in very different um, 
uh, LMSs. So um, that that can be a bit tricky. But uh, including in Blackboard itself, there are two different implementations of LTI, and they both work in different ways. Um, but um, hopefully, the idea is that once it does work across everything, you should only ever need one um, integration, and it, it can all be built into OpenCast itself. Um, managing the permissions of um, the ACLs uh, in OpenCast could get confusing. Um, if you um, have permission to see, if the lecturer has permission to see more than the users do, um, so if you want to share um, recordings across modules, um, luckily the way our timetabling system works, we know that multiple modules um, need to share teaching, uh, so I can add the ACLs at the scheduling time. But if you wanted to, to um, share them with another module that wasn't scheduled, um, we would have to change the ACLs when you add the um, uh, when you add the LTI link in. Um, and the problem with that is that's that's fine, uh, but when you remove the LTI link, um, there would be no easy way of removing those um, permissions. So um, lecturers may think that deleting a link from um, from the LMS would stop students being able to see those videos, but they actually wouldn't because they could still go in through the engage um, uh, tools and see uh, all of the videos that were still shown to them. Um, Blackboard LTI implementation um, is rubbish. Um, it's not. <laughs> it's not complete. Um, it doesn't support. It, it's not. Rather trickily, they say it's certified, but it's a very old version of the Blackboard LTI tools uh, implementation that is certified by LTI. Um, and the new one is the latest one is not actually um, certified. It doesn't pass the uh, LTI specification tests or anything. Uh, there is an unofficial um, building block for backboards that does support all the latest LTI stuff, um, but that has some bugs as well, which are being fixed. So at the moment, I've only done I've only built the the series uh, front end. Um, LTI tool, but um, now that the back end part works, adding things to do, uploading, um, embedding a single video um, is uh, very straightforward, should be pretty easy to do. Um, I need to think about the, um, a simple UI for permissions and changing ACLs because I think the uh, OpenCast. Um, UI for, you know, for, for dealing with ACLs is very flexible, but I wouldn't like to give that to a lecturer. Um, and also, uh, I'd like to uh, obviously contribute this back to OpenCast because it's only a small change and uh, it should be, hopefully, it'll be useful for other people. So that's that. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, there's no pull request at the moment, but um, when I get when I get back, hopefully uh, not too long. Yes. We have a very strong interest also in content matters for the videos. Yeah. So I'm pleased that last year I could create the Jira, and this year I can assign it, <laughs> and soon it will be resolved. <laughs> um, that's great. So. I hadn't ever really looked into the depths of LTI, but one of, I mean, of the deep linking stuff. One of the use cases that people come up with is <clears throat> they want to put like a specific video in a different context. And I'm wondering on the whole permission story if there's a way to sort of implicitly authorize the use of a video in a different context. Like you give it a token and the different placement will use the token to authorize in preference to having to have the, LC the ACLs for a different co context, because it seems like that could get tricky, like you could embed it in three other places and then you go and edit the ACLs somewhere else and you remove them and then that placement loses access to it unexpectedly. Yeah, um, really? uh, yeah. I think, um, the permissions is definitely going to be the real complicated part because if you 
like you say, if you if you embed it in lots of different places and then you delete it from different places and things, I think people are going to expect that it is only accessible if you link to it from the VLE and the LMS. Um, but yeah, that sounds like an interesting idea, actually. Um, rather than updating the ACLs, having some kind of... So there was a discussion um, a while ago on the list about um, private uh, videos where it would be available only if you had the link. Maybe that might be a, a way of, uh, of dealing, it as well, dealing with it as well. Um, and will you contribute your Blackboard provider as well? Because yes. there's now also a Moodle provider in the pull request queue. So it would be good to get all these integrations both into the core code base and then also listed on our website. So yeah. anyone can go and see all the integrations and what's available. Have you created another ticket for him to fulfill <laughs> to next year? <laughs> yeah, it'll be done by next year then. <laughs> okay. Um, any more questions? Otherwise, thank you.